Yeah, I ain't got time for it. Well, it should be playing music, but it's not playing music. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, what were you saying? Okay, I'll hold it. Yeah, so they're going to... Uh, you know, I do really encourage creative names. So if you got some really creative names, time. Go, go for it. Uh, oh, your seniors get really crazy with their names, so... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> the real pros are uh, use both their computers and their phones. Oh. So, <laughs> so you can get one wrong, but... You got 50-50. 50-50. Yeah, I mean... One is a throwaway account. Like like, that's why I, do all my work I like the act checker who plays it better. What, what <laughs> <laughs> this is too mellow for you? Yeah, yeah, with the time. Nah, nah, yo. It's not getting me into the game. I thought you were all stressed out, trying to get some good vibes. This is literally cool beats to study and relax to. For no, chill beats. I don't want to listen to Kahoot's voice. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Total bones are there in the adult human skeleton? No. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. Correct. 206. Do make sure when you're reviewing these numbers that you look at not only the total number, but the number with appendicular versus axial. Mm -hmm. Please tell me you did orange. All right. What city was this about to be born in? Y'all pay attention to my presentation. <laughs> okay, extra points on this one. Hey. Okay, so the majority of you guys listened. I <laughs> give you a few of you. Nope. Nope. Ten points for Oh my god. <laughs> 
All right, the appendicular skeleton includes the skull. True or false? Oh, no, God. why did you do yeah. that? Yeah. Be careful, read your choices oh, carefully. Can it get you? Yeah. You said okay, true and false, so I immediately think. Oh, I know I said that, but you gotta read your question. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's on me, that's on me. False. Where is Seven the skeleton? Oh, is the skull half half. found in? I was in second. Oh, we got all kinds of movement here. Okay. 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 All right. Which body habitus makes up thirty-five percent of the population? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. He was something. worried that time. <laughs> <laughs> he was genuinely worried. Rhea is on fire. So by Maka and Mana. Are you a wizard? <laughs> Can you oh, okay. like, like a wizard with your magic power and mana? Yeah, I'm the only one. Okay. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd, yes. Okay. A sagittal body plane would divide the body into anterior and posterior sections. True or false? Left and right is right. Left and right section. Yeah. Yeah. Your channel's locked, right? No. 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 It's, it's, you can, uh, I'll resend the link. You should click it. It should pop off. Okay. Yeah, go to playlist and they're divided by class. I guess I wasn't. I didn't have good internet. I clicked one of the videos and it like booted me out. Oh, no. The specific plane passes through the midline and divides by the equal anterior and posterior halves is what? If there's no left and right, there's the corona logos. Left and right, right unequal, like just regular left and right has an exagonal, equal left and right, like a mid sagittal. And for this is between mid corona and mid sagittal. Equal anterior and posterior for mid corona. Let's move on. Let's move on. Great. We got a lot of questions here. The horizontal plane is also known by what name or names? So remember that particular slice, which means it's divided into superior and inferior halves. It goes by the name of horizontal, axial, and transverse. All three of those mean the same thing. Students. <laughs> Very creative. The following image is an example of what kind of body plane? It's going to be a sagittal plane. 
So as you'll think, we're looking at the sides, the side slice, left and right slices. All right, the scores are going all over the place here. The bottom of the foot is also known as what surface? Mm -hmm. Plantar, plantar, top of the foot would be the dorsal. Bottom of the foot, plantar, top of the foot, dorsal. Okay, Vanilius in second place. Maka or Maka is on fire in first place. A patient standing up is in one general position. So supine will be lying down on our back, upright will be standing up. Very good. All right. The patient in this image is in what general position? General position. Read your words carefully. See how many curious results on this one. So, good, the majority got that right, but be careful once again, guys, if I'm looking for the projection, the projection was PA, but the position was prone. What else could that fall under? Recumbent as well, recumbent. Okay. What specific oblique is this patient positioned for? The right posterior surface is closest to the IR. Y'all see that? So remember, you're looking at the patient that's their right, not your left and your right, it's the patient's right and left. I know we're answering quick, but when you're doing your test, read it carefully, look at your pictures carefully. You can determine what that specific position is. Right. The patient in this image is in what specific position? Specific position. Choose the best answer. Let's be decubitus. So, why was decubitus the better answer than recumbent? Because he's like crazy. Well, not exactly, because recumbent's technically. Correct, but what made the cutest the best answer? This right here. Specific position. Cubist is specificity, recumbent is overall general. So all, all positions where we're lying down, technically recumbent's right, but if it's asking for a specific position, make sure you go to the more specific answer, unless recumbent's the only one that applies. That makes sense? Choosing the best answer. And I hate those types of questions with a passion but the registry throws a lot of those at you. So be careful. We got a game here, folks. The scores are getting close. A patient is standing erect. The x-ray beam enters him, her anterior and exit posterior. Specifically, this is... Posterior, AP projection. Excellent. Because we lost two people. He's still on fire. What kind of lateral occurs when the beam enters the medial aspect and exits the lateral aspect of the image parts? And I'm sorry, we did not go over this. This is from Bond Traker. If you don't get this right, I apologize. This is not in the curriculum anymore. But the answer's in the question. This is my last year. I apologize. So, um, medial lateral, it enters medial, 
excess lateral, medial lateral projection, but for barrels guys and for registry purposes, you just need to know that as a lateral projection. So don't worry about that. That's old. My apologies. I'm sorry, that's Richard Scores out there. <laughs> the foot is blank to the hip. Give me your point of origin so you can answer that question. Foot is blank to the hip. Hip is your point of origin. Distal. Foot is distal to the hip. Flexing the arm is what kind of movement? Answer to your question. Flexion. <laughs> Flexion. Very good. Oh, the Mako takes over the lead. We've got a duel here. <laughs> the patient's medical record number is not a required piece of information needed to perform an x ray procedure. True or false? Chapter one, make sure you're gonna have chapter one material as well. That's false. We do need the medical record number on every day. Yeah, but is it not one of those four things? It's one of those listed ones, yes. It's one of the first four? But we had the name there, sir, and the ID, but with the number there, sir? ID would, have, would uh, apply to the medical record number, yes. All right, a radiograph with the hands feet should always be hung out. Digits are fingers, by the way. How would we hang that film? How would we present that to a radiologist? Like this, digits up, pointed towards the ceiling. You look at a radiograph, it should look the same way. You don't have it pointed down, it should always be pointed up. That's for the hands and the feet only, by the way, guys. Hands and feet. Which of the following is considered a short bone? This should not have been in your That was supposed to say scapula. I, I <laughs> that wrong. Oh, I see. Scapoid is a carpal. So my, my bad. Those of you that think scapoid were also correct. I'm sorry. <coughs> but then scapoid is what, sir? It's scapoid is one of your carpal bones. Oh, it's considered a short bone. Clavicle would be considered a long bone, and fingers are not bones. Finger, the bones and the fingers are called phalanges. I know that's rad too. I was, I was mean on that one. Yesterday I told my dad about the four fingers Blow his mind. No, you're wrong. It'll blow people's mind when yeah. I do that. Yeah. I remember, I think, uh, I think I argued with somebody about it once, too. Yeah. I don't want to believe that. But, that's the truth. Which of the following contains a hinge joint? Malleolus, Malleolus, review those vocabulary guys. You're going to see questions just like that in your tests. X-ray tube towards the feet is known as caudad, caudad or caudal. 
Towards the head would be cephalic or cephalad. Close to the end here. Which organization establishes the code of ethics? I'll just have this question on phones test as well. I'm not mistaken. SRT is focused on the curriculum. JSERT is going to be the accrediting body. TSRT is a Texas Society of Realized Technologists. Uh, whoever put blue can come see me on the class. So, I'm, just, I'm, just gonna, I'm, just gonna, I'm sorry. No animal shielding should be used even if it is covering pertinent anatomy. <laughs> I was running out of material at this point. It's going to be false. Why is that false? It's a very important thing to know. So the key word there was pertinent anatomy. Pertinent anatomy is the anatomy that we need to see on the radiograph. Therefore, if a shield is going to cover the needed anatomy that we need to visualize, you would not put a shield on that area. The key word there was pertinent anatomy. So now shielding should be used even if it is not covering pertinent anatomy would make that true. Does that make sense? All of those key words again. Say so in this test, if you want to change the answer, if you click by mistake, so can you do it or not? You can go back and change your answers, yes. Well, how do you do that, sir? No, not for Kahoot. Not on Kahoot. Kahoot. You can do it on the test. Oh, no, on Kahoot. On ExamSoft, you can. No. On the real test. Not, uh, yeah, I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. This is the real test, though, right? <laughs> no. No, no, it's not. It's a good preview, though. It's the types of things you'd expect. Which of the following is found in the abdominal cavity? So the other three are found in the thoracic cavity, the chest cavity. Yours would be the only one found in the abdominal cavity. Okay. Last one. This is for all the money. Imaginary money. Don't hold me to that. What quadrant contains the gallbladder? That next one is flying in here, man. Take it in tents. No, we're chilling. <laughs> It's down right below or right within the liver, right upper quadrants. So definitely review those quadrants, guys. Make sure you know how to name the quadrants as well as what organs fall within those quadrants. Also know the number of divisions. So the nine divisions in the There's nine of them. But focus mainly on the quadrants and what works with them in the quadrants. All right, let's see. Coming in in third place, we have Emily. In second place, we have Mika or Monica. And in number one, with 21,091 points, we have Nana. Good job. Runners up were Demilius and Cody. Very good. All right. So, I hope that is a good preview for you guys for the test. Um, once again, how are you going to be successful in this test? Well, of course, you need to study. Read your notes, but also read your chapter guides. Read your book. Um, think about these questions critically. When you take your tests, don't second guess yourself. Go with your instinct. Don't change your answers. Read each question three times before you answer because you've got to look at those key words to be successful in this test. There's a lot of words that are similar, and a lot of singular words that can be changed to change the meaning of a question. You've got to look at those key words. Study in some groups. I uh, really recommend really doing study groups. And for the positioning and all the projections, practice on your classmates and your family members. They'll give you a visual and actual application of that to help you recall it for the test. Everything that you're having trouble with, 
memory dump before you start your test on that sheet of paper like we talked about. But if you study, guys, if you study your notes, you need your book, I believe you'll do well. If you don't say against yourself and you don't change your answers, you'll do well. So you can do this. Yes? So the book doesn't, at least in the chapters, for like, you know, that we had that question about the quadrant and like the specific organ in it, the book doesn't really go into detail in the chapter about what organs are in specific quadrants. Um, no, so do I just need to look that up and find it? Or? No, it's based on the picture. So okay. focus on where is the liver line, the gallbladder, the stomach, and the intestines okay. primarily. Okay. And you'll, you'll be fine. Okay. I do know the registry does ask a few questions on that. So I have expanded on it a little bit. But that's the uh, liver, gallbladder, intestines, that's small and large, by the way, and stomach. Know, how they're, know where they're located, know where the overlaps are, know how to name those four quadrants. And it's the same thing for like the classification of the bone. Like we were going over, I think it was the carpal, it was a short bone. And like the chapter isn't that specific about naming those sometimes. So should I just. So it will be as we get into further chapters, they're keeping more general for now. But as far as the examples I gave, focus on those examples that I gave. Okay. Yes. So liver, gallbladder, stomach, and intestines. The test will be 70 questions, multiple choice. Um, once again, why are we doing larger tests? Because I've got to train you to take 200 question tests. Look what your board exam is going to be. So we've got to train that brain. You're going to get used to it. You're going to get more skilled at it as we move on. But, um, Study, you should do well, guys. You should do well. So make sure you study. Don't wait until the night before. Don't wait until an hour before the test to cram it. It's not going to work. It's a lot of information. So, 70 questions. 70 questions. Multiple choice. 70 questions in 12. Yes, you have two hours. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, let's do two more of our student presentations. Yeah. 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 Yeah.